Ugh, damn it, I forgot my shirt. What's up, guys? This is Motomisha once again, delivering you another video with my face on it. So, here we go. Oh, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. This time, we're doing something a little different. Uh, we're reacting to the Spanish Grand Prix that just happened. Oh, so much to talk about. So much to unpack. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have you here. You're here. You made it. Great. But I just want to take a word first off to thank everyone for the support recently. Uh, all you new subscribers, I appreciate you. I love you. Mwah. It's really nice to know that people like what I'm doing. And uh, let's keep it going. All right? You guys keep me going. Aww. I almost teared up. And all of you in the comments who have uh, been pouring in your support for what I'm doing. Thank you so much. And on another note, uh, I just wanted to let you know my next videos are going to be uh, coming out later this week on Friday, probably, as well as the following Monday. I'm going to do some videos on Miami and uh, Alicia Spargro. So stay tuned for those videos. Oh, what to talk about. The Spanish Grand Prix just happened this morning. Really good race. Really, really interesting to watch. I mean, I was a little tired, but oh, man, some of the stuff in the race that happened really woke me up, which was really nice to see. First off, uh, what's up with all those crashes? It was because of the temperature. It was, I think the track temperature was 45 to 50 uh, during the race, and the air temperature was about 29 to 30 degrees centigrade. So with those high temperatures, it made for a lot of crashes, really slippery and greasy track. I mean, some of the people that were crashing out, like Johan Zarco, Jorge Martin, Darren Binder, Stefan Bradl. I know there's a couple more I'm missing, but it's a shame for all those crashes, you know? Yeah, and also there was these damp spots on the track, apparently, uh, because it rained on the Thursday before the free practice, and so that damp spot was creating some, you know, obviously moisture, and it was becoming slippery if you got off the racing line, and I think that's where Zarco crashed out, as well as maybe Martin, I can't remember exactly, but shame for them, especially because Ducati has been doing pretty well this year so far. And speaking of Ducati, my boy Peko Banyaya is back. Thank God. Thank you very much. And you could even see it on his face after the race. He was just relieved to just finally get that first win of the year right off his back, you know, uh, after some disappointing results for the first five rounds of the season. So that was always nice to see, right? And his race pace with the consistent lap times in the 138s and the high 137s. Uh, was really good, you know, and he was facing pressure from Quartararo behind him for the whole race, but luckily, you know, no mistakes, mistake-free race from Peko Banyaya. He's back on top. It's nice to see him back continuing that late season surge he had last year, which was, you know, something really good to see. And if he was supposed to be the, the main contender this year for the title, but so far it hasn't been looking like that. But, you know, there's still a lot of more rounds to go in the season, so you never know, right? And that's sports for you. You just never know. Speaking of other riders, though, there were some very decent results for these other riders. I mean, the likes of Takanaka Gami, which thankfully for him came seventh. Mark Marquez was an impressive fourth. Uh, there was also Marco Bezzecchi who finished ninth. Good on the rookie, good job. And as well as Binder and Oliveira in 10th and 12th respectively, making a nice recovery from qualifying, not even making Q2 actually. So they started way back in the pack uh, and made up several places to finish a solid 10th and 12th. Good on them. As well as Jack Miller, Thriller Miller coming in a solid fifth. Good on him. I know it wasn't what he wanted. He was. Uh, in the podium placing for most of the race in the third place with the likes of Mark Marquez and Alicia Spargro on his back. But I think his pace on the bike was was pretty good considering uh, what's going on with him and his whole contract situation and everything. I mean, and compared to the other Ducatis on the day, with the exception of Peko Banyaya, really good showing for him, especially with his job on the line at Ducati. So we'll see what happens. It's He's making a strong case that for Ducati to keep him, right? Obviously. Like I said, Bezeki coming in ninth. I mean, good on the rookie first year, and he had a sensational qualifying, and then he followed up in the race with a ninth place. I mean, he qualified, I think it was eighth, and then only to lose one place in the race? Good on him, man. That's a good job. Really proud of him. We'll see We'll see how he can continue uh, throughout the rest of the season, if he can show some good form here. And of course, Mark Marquez coming in fourth. Nips Jack Miller. Good on him. Really good showing for him, considering uh, all the crashes he's been having as of late. Ooh, 
and the other guy, who I mentioned in my previous video in my Jack Miller video, which you can find a link in the description below. Taka Nakagami man for LCR Honda. Good result for him. He needed a result this race, uh, especially with his job on the line as well at LCR. People have kind of grown tired of him now, especially since he hasn't been producing the best results possible. And he's been in the in the top class for a number of years now without a single podium to show for it. So he needed a result. It's all about the consistency with Taka, really. I mean, he comes in at seventh and the next race he'll crash out. Then he'll come in at maybe like top 10 the following race. And then the race after that, he'll just crash out again. So it's really about the consistency with him. Uh, yeah. Oh, and Binder and Oliveira. I mean, come on. These KTM boys, such a strong start to the season. It's unfortunate what's been going on with them recently with their pace and everything, but I think it was a strong showing. 10th and 12th, considering where they started back in, I think it was 17th and 22nd or something. Really good showing for them. Let's see what they can do for the rest of the season. Speaking of, one of the best battles of the race was the battle for third place between the likes of Jack Miller, Mark Marquez, and Alicia Spargaro. Wow, what a battle. That was great. I mean, Jack Miller was just acing those turns. Mark Marquez, you could see him lurking behind. Miller just had those turns on point and wasn't making mistakes. And Alicia Spargo as well, just lurking behind the both of them, watching them. And finally, there was a turn where Marquez went wide and he saved a crash. He almost low-sided. And Miller also was so close to washing out as well, because at that point in the race, I think it was like lap 20 of 25. Alicia Spargo just took advantage of both the riders in front of him, faltering a little bit on one of the turns and he just goes right up the inside and from there you could see his pace was just on fire. He immediately started creating a gap. Good on Alicia Spargaro for a solid third place. And can we can we say something about Alicia Spargaro for a second? I know I want to do a video about him later. Wow, Alicia Spargaro, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of him. I mean, finally, just something about this year. I don't know. Man, he's in the form of his life and it's so good to see someone like that who's so well deserved. He's stuck it out with Aprilia for so long. And finally, with Aprilia, he's showing results. Hell of a job for Alish, so good on him. And finally, last but not least, the defending, reigning, undisputed world MotoGP champion of the world, Fabio Quartararo. Sorry, that was my inner WWE voice coming out. But yeah, Fabio Quartararo. Uh, great job on him leading the championship now, spreading out a lead. I mean, Alicia Spargo, second in the championship, creeping up there, but Fabio Quartararo looks like he's doing a solid defense of his MotoGP World Championship from last year. Really good pace from him today as well. He kept up with Peko the whole time, kept the gap at just under a second for most of the race. Towards the last couple laps, he brought it down to half a second. Really good to see him riding that Yamaha bike to the fullest. Meanwhile, his other Yamaha compatriots, uh, not so much. And with that, I think that is all she wrote for this video. So thank you for tuning in if you've stuck around this long. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Ciao. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you have stuck around this long, hit that like button, drop a comment, and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Until next time, this is Moto Misha, checking out. Peace.